those are the three raccoons that I've been seeing. They come by here almost every night. It's uh, October 8th, I think. It's about 6 o'clock. I'm um, one of my parents' farm on our food plot that we planted this year. And uh, I just had a doe come in all by herself. And I put a good shot on her. Um, it's been windy the last couple of days. I had encounters with seven or Anyhow, let's see where she was standing. She was standing somewhere over here, I believe. She was standing. Okay. Sweet. You can see her tracks where she turned. Yeah, she was standing right here. You can see some hair there, some white hair. Probably where the arrow came out on the other side. There's a little bit of blood there as well. And I can see where her friends dug in. Yeah, there's some blood there. Some blood there. Not a ton, but. Uh, buried up to the fletchings. So, uh, we'll see what we got here. Okay, I see some blood here. It's a pretty good spray right there. Some blood there. Some blood there. Tops of here. It's a pretty good line. I don't know if you can see it on the, on the camera here, but pretty good line. Ways. 
so I'm surprised I could have hit this much blood, but you know, you know sometimes you're, you just need the runaways, you know, I mean, a lot of guys will say, oh, this broadhead's better than that broadhead, or whatever, you know, this broadhead needs a better blood trail, but I've seen everything happen with deer, and the fact of the matter is, they have to die by bleeding, you know, and especially if you hit them through the heart, and you don't take them through both lungs, which... I think I got a little bit of everything, but you can see what she dug in here as she was running. Yeah, she's on this trail now. You can see there's quite a bit of blood. She's she's spraying pretty good, so. So yeah, the guys will say this broadhead or that broadhead is better for blood trails and stuff, and you know, a lot of guys forget that it all depends, you know, it depends on where you hit them, it depends on the deer. Especially guys that, I think it's funny, the guys that don't find deer complain about how they made perfect shots. And if there's one thing I learned from bow hunting, it's, you know, anything can happen. Still pretty good here. And, uh, you know, you want a good sharp shot head, obviously, to kill the deer. And then she's spraying all the way out to the sides, all the way up here off the, it's like three, four feet off of the trail. If you want a good sharp broadhead, yeah, it's essential, but sometimes deer just need to, you know, run away before they're going to die, no matter how sharp a broadhead is. You know, it depends on if they took a breath right before you hit them, or if, uh, you know, or how big the deer is, or if it's popped up on adrenaline, or So don't get too worked up, you know, the main things you want in a broadhead are you want something that's strong, something that's accurate. I mean, yeah, you want something that leaves good blood trails, but if you hit a deer where you're supposed to, then that really shouldn't be a problem. You can see she's crashing through here, blood everywhere, quite a bit of blood. I don't know if I said it, but this is with the uh, 125 grain Schwacker blade that I've reviewed previously and shot some deer with. Uh, had good luck with this broadhead. Got a lot of confidence in it. You know, and uh, you know, this broadhead, this blood trail here is is pretty good. I mean, you know, I'm not losing it at all. There's plenty of blood to follow. I mean, you can see it's spraying on the trees over here. Some guy, you know, I've seen blood trails where it looks like people just dump gallons and gallons and gallons of blood. And, you know, I, I think that's pretty rare. Even with, you know, broadheads like the Schwacker or the Rage. Um, don't get too hopped up in what you expect as far as blood trails and stuff. I mean, expect, you know, I mean, this is plenty, plenty of blood to follow, obviously. And this is what you want, you know, something that's going to kill the deer quickly and humanely is accurate, is strong. And, you know, we'll leave you a blood trail, but... Like I said, don't don't expect you know just complete buckets of blood. I mean, this is as good as you're gonna get for the most part, from what I've seen. But I've also seen good blood trails like this from a you know a muzzy three blade that I used for years, um, and that kind of thing as well. If you hit the deer in the right spot, you know my uh, my hunches. You know, I from what I've seen is that you're gonna you know you're gonna have a good blood trail. And I've seen weird stuff where you hit them, you hit them well, and it killed the deer, and you don't get any blood from all different kinds of broadheads. It just depends, you know. Wait a bit of blood there. You should be laying up here. I'm thinking, hopefully, the next 25, 30 yards, because we're getting up near where I heard a crash. So. Some blood there. There, on the top. We've come about, if you can see, back that way, we've come about, as the deer is gone, I'd say, a good 50, 60 yards. And as you can see, he's still bleeding good. Top to that, top to that. You know, and a lot of guys, I think, trying to make stuff look better than it is, you know, you can never trust it a lot of times if there's cutaways and that kind of thing. Um, not that everybody is lying, of course. 
you know, I trust what I use, and that's why I'm trying to show you guys here the stuff that I've used. It's worked, worked well for me. You can really see where she's digging in here. Quite a bit of blood on the ground. She must be getting ready to die pretty soon. She's, she's really digging her hooves in. Some one around. See her here, there's quite a bit of blood. She almost ran into this tree. She stopped here. Where'd she go? This way, I believe. There's blood there. Blood there. I think I see the deer up there. Yep, she can. Right back to the, the cover she came out of. Yeah, she took a took a 90 degree left turn here. It's getting a little dark, so it's starting to get hard for me to see. I see some blood up here. Okay. Trying to find. I can see the deer. Deer is right over there by the base of that tree. But oh, here it is right here. Here's the wood trail. Actually, starting to thin out a little bit. It was really, really gushing, and uh, now we're getting into some leaves and stuff. I mean, there's still blood there, obviously, but it makes it a little bit harder to see. Let's see what's there. There as well. I think the deer ran right back into the bed. That she came out of. Oh, there's the uh, tip of my arrow. Oh, the uh, fletching, of course. Yeah, they buried right up to the fletching on that. So. And here's the deer. Nice doe, all by herself. This is the kind of doe I like to take, you know. Doesn't have any fawns with it. So whether the fawn was killed by something or for some reason she can't breed, whatever, there's not a fawn that's dependent on her. So I feel better about taking deer, um, you know, does when they're by themselves versus when they have, you know, two fawns or whatever. I mean, I know you can do it and it's, I've done it before, but if I had a choice, I prefer to take them uh, by themselves. <clears throat> Take a look at how our broadhead did. This is the, uh, the exit, as I said, she was quartering to me a little bit. And that is the exit of the Schwacker. 125 grain two blade. You know, it's about two and a quarter. One thing with these angled shots, though, especially with these two, you know, with any broadhead or with the two blade, is that. Uh, you can see like you'll cut the hide and then the hide will move up and it'll cover the hole. So if this deer would have been completely perfectly broadside, I think the blood trail would have been substantially better. It wasn't bad, obviously. I showed you. It was pretty good. Um, let's flip the deer over here. And uh, take a look at the entry hole. Sorry for the shaky camera. I'm doing this by myself. There we go. There's the entry hole of the Schwacker. So, as you can see, 
I hit her high, which is uh, what I want to do because it was an angle, you know, quite a bit going down. So the barrel came down lower, and um, that's, you know, about the size of what it's supposed to be, but a little over an inch, inch and a quarter or so, two blade. You can see that, so gives you an idea, and uh, I got her with the uh, my trusty Bowtech Invasion CPX, shooting a uh, Carbon Express Maxima Blue Streak 350 Arrow with broadhead and everything. I have three uh, white blazers and a white reflective blazer wrap on the end. Total arrow weight is 419 grains. Um, and my bow shoots at about 300 feet per second. So, uh, great combo and worked out really good. Um, I need some meat and I bought a bonus tag. In Wisconsin this year is a little different where it's private land and public land split tags. So this is a private land tag. And uh, it's a nice average size doe for around here. A nice adult by herself. So, I guess thanks for watching. Any questions or anything, just let me know. Um, otherwise, uh, as you can see, you know, she's bleeding. Pretty good and had a decent blood trail. Uh, I'm happy with that. I've seen better. I've seen a lot worse. Um, so I think uh, all around everything performed well, as I know it will, because um, I've shot deer before with the broadhead and I've tested it uh, pretty pretty extensively. So thanks a lot for watching, and uh, hope you enjoy this. Hey guys, uh, one thing I also forgot to say that I just wanted to mention. I got the deer out to the road here, obviously. Is uh, I previously reviewed this Tenzing TZ1140 pack and it's been doing great. As you can see, I know it's getting a little dark here, but I uh, am obviously doing this hunt by myself and I shot the deer, found it, and I was able to, uh, you know, there's a compression strap. I just strapped my bow right to the back of that uh, pack there and I got my quiver mounted to the side mount and uh, worked just great and I could have my hands free to pull the deer out by myself. I don't use a four wheeler or anything like that. And uh, I got on my other side, I got my, my gun I always bring with me for defense against bears and wolves that we got out here. And I got my bow hoist and I got all my, my goodies in there. I got to get to field dressing this deer and stuff. But just wanted to kind of give you a quick show of uh, how that thing has been working really good for me. So uh, any questions, just uh, give me a holler. Thanks. Bye.